doesn't seem to be on any of these stations. Keep looking. Oh, you're going too slow. Let me take the wheel. It's too fast. How could you even tell what's on? I can tell. Hey, it's Michael. Stop. Hello. I'm Michael Eisner, head of Walt Disney. <laughs> Disney and Pixar teamed together and made some of the best movies ever made, and some not-so-great ones. Around 2004 and 2005, the tension between them was high, no thanks to Michael Eisner, who was the CEO of the Walt Disney Company at the time. Eisner went on to found Circle 7 Animation, a failed studio wanting to create sequels to popular Pixar films like Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, and Toy Story 2. They ended up not releasing any of those films, and now the movies are considered lost media. Today, I'm going to dive into the story of Circle 7 Animation. The story starts after the wildly successful release of Toy Story 2, the best Toy Story film, in theaters, garnering $57.4 million in November of 1999. Then CEO of Pixar, Steve Jobs, and Michael Eisner couldn't agree on how they could work together after their seven film agreement. Eisner also claimed that Toy Story 2 did not count as part of those seven films since it was a sequel. Ten months after that, Jobs announced that Pixar would not be working with Disney for the foreseeable future, and would find other distributors starting in 2006. He wanted the most amount of profit possible from their films, and total control of any future work after Cars came out in the same year. Creative control, ego problems, and money led Eisner to make Circle 7 animation to continue making movies with Pixar characters. This led animators to call it Pixart. At the time, Disney had the rights to all of the characters and could do really whatever they wanted with them. Named after the street it was founded on, Circle 7 Drive in Glendale, California, they began to hire staff in 2004, but officially formed in March of 2005. When asked about the studio, Andrew Stanton, director and writer for Finding Nemo, said, We were never fooled that Circle 7 wasn't the most expensive bargaining chip ever created. But we also knew that bargaining chip or not, they'd go through with it. They weren't going to blink. John Lasseter, the Pixar executive producer, did not comment, but was reportedly upset at the damage these moves would cause, and had to deliver the bad news to all 800 of Pixar's employees at a meeting. The only movies Circle 7 ever worked on, and never released, were an early version of Toy Story 3, Monsters Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradice, and Finding Nemo 2. The first version of Toy Story 3 was set to be directed by Bradley Raymond, who had previously directed the straight-to-video Lion King 1 and a half, my favorite Lion King film, and the screenplay was written by Sherry and Bill Steinkellner, if I say that wrong, please correct me, who had worked on Disney's Teacher's Pet. At first glance, this version is somewhat similar to the Toy Story 3 we got. Anyways, the draft had Woody in the toy set in a western world nowhere close to Andy's room, and then warped back to Grandma's spooky attic when we learn that Andy is older, but not quite college age, and his mom is redecorating and planning to get rid of some of the toys. The toys instantly feel uncomfortable, and they soon meet two sock monkeys named Gladiola and Jack Challenger, along with a cat with a preference for toys and a moody garden gnome. Altogether, it turns into a murder mystery, even though no toy is murdered, and only two make it back to Andy's room. The second version was written by Jim Hersfeld, but would be polished into a working script by Bob Hilgenberg and Rob Muir. I probably butchered that. <laughs> Anyways. In the draft, Buzz starts acting funny, and so his friends send him back to his Taiwanese manufacturer. The toys soon learn that the Buzz Lightyear toys are being recalled, so they set out on a mission to save him, shipping themselves to China through FedEx. They also end up saving Jade, a tough gal toy that was scheduled to be destroyed. This version was set to release sometime in 2008, but that clearly didn't happen. After Disney bought Pixar for $7.4 billion in January of 2006, the draft was officially scrapped by the new Disney CEO, Bob Iger. The director of Toy Story 3, Lee Unkrich, said this about the early version. The first order of business when Disney bought us was to get Toy Story 3 back in our hands. We didn't read their script, not out of spite, but we wanted to start fresh and not be influenced by what they'd done. We didn't look at any of the work they'd done. We really didn't want to know anything about it. Unkrich went on to release Toy Story 3 on June 18, 2010, winning two Oscars and 96 other nominations. Unlike most pieces of Lost Media, we have quite a bit from this Lost draft, ranging from concept art to the script. Shane Zalvin released some of his character designs for the Lost film, but I couldn't find the exact date he released them. On November 24, 2010, both Hilgenberg and Muir detailed more about the film in a piece of concept art by Rick Sluter on their blog that was posted 13 days later. We also got more information about the nickname for Circle 7, Pixart, but those posts disappeared and no one is sure why. On October 18th, 2018, 
Lost Media Wiki user VeggieFinder found the Toy Story 3 script on ScriptCity.com for $15, which was quickly purchased by another Lost Media Wiki user, YoshiKiller, on September 15th, 2019 when they found out about it and posted it publicly on Google Drive. On December 10th of 2019, YoshiKiller was able to talk to Hersfeld, where he agreed to share his draft, which was also uploaded publicly on Google Drive. One year later, we got another piece of concept art by Jim Martin showing the toys escaping from a daycare. This and other images from the lost film can be seen on his website. The second film, Monsters Inc. 2 Lost in Scared Ice, was also being worked on by Bob Hilgenberg and Rob Muir. Their idea is setting Mike and Sully trapped in the human world looking for Boo on the eve of Mike and Celia's wedding. They end up meeting more banished monsters like El Chupacabra and the Jersey Devil, and maybe the Loch Ness Monster? They set out on a mission to reunite with Boo and find a way back home. Bob Hilgenberg said about the pitch, When we pitched it, that was the thing that got them excited, introducing these new characters but keeping it within the world and keeping it believable. Hilgenberg and Muir's goal was to stay true to the characters and almost prove to Pixar that they can make just as good of a film as them. If you want a more detailed rundown of the plot, please go check out Hema Studios' video on the lost film. They even got to interview Bob Hilgenberg. I'll leave a link in the description if any of y'all want to check it out. Highly recommend. While the film seemed promising since the writers were working so hard and the studio seemed hopeful, things turned sour after Michael Eisner stepped down as Disney's CEO a week after Circle 7 opened. Bob Iger took his place, and he was the one to recover the relationship between Disney and Pixar. This move by Iger put Circle 7 in a tough position since they were made to create sequels to Pixar films. You know, Pixar was back and could do whatever they wanted with the ideas. Employees of Circle 7 spread rumors of what would happen to the studio, and it all came to a head when Ed Catmull, the head of Pixar, called everyone in Circle 7 to a meeting and announced that they were shutting it down and effectively scrapping all of their projects. I find it disappointing that they didn't even give the sequel a chance. I honestly believe it might have turned out better than Monsters University, but oh well. We do have six pieces of concept art and the screenplay still has yet to be found. On June 24th, 2019, a tweet by Jim Hill Media said, I'll see if I can dig out my copy of that Monsters Inc. 2 screenplay. Seriously, the tail end scene of this thing would have reduced moviegoers around the world to tears. However, he was the main person claiming that the adult cartoons of Popeye, Betty, Tinkerbell, and Jiminy Cricket exist, so who the heck knows about this, you know? But it's possible he knows someone who might have it. He's talked about the film in the past, dating back to 2011, and I doubt someone would lie about having a script for that long. So I think it sounds like a promising lead. Hi, just a quick little update. Sorry, I look kind of crusty. <laughs> but anyways, Alice's Q actually reached out to Jim Hill to see if he had any more information or if he could talk to him. And Bob, uh, not Bob, <laughs> Jim actually responded and said, let me reach out to Bob Hilgenberg and see if he's willing to talk with you about the boarded Circle 7 production. So very, very promising, I think. And then after doing some deeper digging into like the Hemis Studios video, Yoshi Killer actually responded to a tweet with a picture of a title page of a screenplay for the Monsters, Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradise. So, Yoshi Killer actually has it, but under an agreement with Bob Hilgenberg, he is not allowed to release it. He's allowed to talk about it, and he said it's very good. Um, and yeah, it's just exciting that I can like update with the most current information. And I just hope that more things continue to get found, because there are definitely things still missing. But yeah, that's... <laughs> That's my quick little update, uh, back to our regular scheduled programming. The last film, Finding Nemo 2, or Nemo 2, had Nemo reuniting with his twin brother Remy, and Marlin getting caught and sent to an aquarium known as Planet Blue. So Nemo, Remy, and Dory set off to rescue him. While Pixar says they didn't look at any of the scripts from these movies, I do see a lot of similarities between this plot and the one we got in 2016's Finding Dory. But that's all I'll say on that. Nemo 2 never had any production officially start before it was cancelled, but the studio had hired Lori Craig, screenwriter on movies like Polly and Ella Enchanted, to write the draft. A script for the sequel can be found on the Raindance Film Festival website, which was found by Veggie Finder on October 13th, 2018. As of when I upload this video, no concept art or any other information about the film has been found. So there is the story of Circle 7 Animation, the studio that didn't release any of their films. It's really sad that these films will most likely never see the light of day. I personally would have loved to see Monsters, Inc. 2 Lost in Scaradice. 
The films had the potential to be great despite the reasoning they existed in the first place. I really learned a lot while making this video and had a lot of fun, and that's always cool. Let me know your thoughts down below and what you want to see me cover next. Leave a like and subscribe, but only if you want to. And I hope you all have a fantastic day.